This is Talk Focus for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 15th, 2020. Our top focus today, 3D printed concrete wind power in the deep blue sea. But before we go to that, here's where sometimes this story comes from. It might come from here, pioneeringnews.com. Tax Science Underground News Links. This is one of our sites, my sites, Frico, that I, I aggregate daily. And today, if you went there, you would see new algorithms present, predicts optimal materials among all possible compounds. U.S. Special Operations Command to develop drone-killing drones to support the Green Berets. Visa is seeking a patent for digital fiat currency and the filling and the <coughs> filing points to a central bank use case. Those are just some of the links that you're missing on pioneering news, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'm going to have to figure out a different way to 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 do that. Uh, when I when I'm about ready to call, consider cause consider turning the thing on because I know you're hearing that click. I wonder if I can next time I'll do here here do I'll do this I'll do yeah I think that that way is better because then I'm not I'm not discombobulating the universe is what's happening there. All right, let's get to the ah in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. That's what was wrong. A little bit combobulated, but I'm back on point. 3D printed concrete wind power in the deep blue sea. Concrete and wind go together like peanut butter and pickles. Unless you're pregnant and this is what it is. No questions. No judgment here. Well, shatter that disconnect between concrete and wind thanks to Purdue University, which is going to use 3D printers to print concrete wind turbines that will be used to create power out in the deep blue sea. For me, there is a poetry about the notion that concrete will be 3D printed into wind turbines, which will be affixed to offshore platforms, which will create power away from the worlds out in the deep blue sea. I actually almost considered using this as the news poem because it was. I thought I could probably get something out of that, but I didn't. Alas, I chose something different. But there. You know, just a, just a subtle kind of, I don't know why. Those, I love it when seemingly disparate elements come together in some theoretical, at least, some sort of harmonious, utilitarian, yet still aesthetically pleasing form. Here's an excerpt from aggregateresearch.com. Wind turbines could be built using 3D printed concrete, say researchers. Purdue University is researching a way to make offshore wind turbines out of 3D printed concrete. The new technique will allow the use of a less expensive material that can be floated out to site from an onshore construction plant. According to a statement out this week from the university, Building traditional steel wind turbines offshore is expensive, requiring parts to be shipped at least 30 miles away from the coast. Conventional concrete manufacturing methods also requires a mold to shape the concrete into the desired structure, which adds to cost and limits design potential possibilities. 3D printing would eliminate the expenses of this mold. It does that. It does that. The researchers are working in collaboration with Arkham Technologies, a startup founded, by the way, Arkham Technologies, if you want to use my voiceover for free, there, if you could do Arkham Technologies, you'll want to. It's free. You can take it. You can take it. It's all yours. A startup founded to develop concrete and additive material manufacturing for onshore, onshore and offshore wind energy technology and the floating wind technology company. The floating wind tick. No, oh, I like the name, but I don't like it, and I don't want to do a voiceover for you. But let me let me hold on, hold on. I'm going to really get you here. Ready? Hold on. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. All right, ready? Ready? Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. This is for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, all right. 
If you're watching our cam technologies, I'm doing this for you. It might take a couple pet breaks. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, you bear with me. I'm auditioning for a voiceover, although it's free. Although you give me credit, get free credit, I can put it on my resume, and then I can get some paying gigs, some voiceover gigs. Get me some voiceover gigs, ladies and gentlemen. Great. All right. So here, here's my, my audition for Arcam Technologies. You can use this. It's free. You're going to want to use this. You're probably going to want to put it on your website. You're probably going to want all of, all of you employees. You'll want it as your ringtone. Here we go. Ready? Now, this might take a couple of, 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 of to get this right. Arcam Technologies, founded to develop concrete additive ma- See, see, I got to get that. I want to say additive materials. I don't know why. All right. Let's get this. Arcam Technologies, a startup founded to develop concrete additive manufacturing for onshore and offshore wind energy technology. There you go. I only took two takes. I thought it was going to take like 15 takes, and this is going to be like a half-hour segment, and you guys are just going to have to deal with it. That big daddy brought it home in two takes. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Well, you could have done it in one. Oh, no, I could not have done it in one. I did it for two takes for you, the people, because I knew it would be more entertaining if I screwed up the first time. Did that for you, the people. You got 24 hours to remove that hate, else you'll pay, says France to the world. Uh, this this image here, I think this is from some movie called La Haine, which means the hate. I don't know anything about it, but it's a French movie because it's, yeah, I just did a, I was just looking for the word, the, the French word for hate, and there's, that's, that's it. There you go. La Haine. La Haine! France just informed the world that all the things that are in France and are digital will be subject to constant harassment by French authorities to remove hateful hatefuls from the interwebs in case the moronic poors get nasty, dumb thoughts in their heads and no longer roll over and play dead when we rub their belly with their own sick. But I'm not hating. Here's the excerpt. Wait, let's turn the music back on. There you go. I turned the music off just for 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 for, for Arkham. Arkham Technologies. We're back on it. We're back on it. French Parliament passes law requiring social media companies delete certain content within an hour. The French Parliament passes a controversial hate speech law on Wednesday that would fine social media companies if they fail to remove certain illegal content. Just the oh, the just the unctuous unctuosity of the individuals that sat around a table and wrote this crap down and looked in holy heart holy heart illegal don't forget to write the word illegal that makes it immoral oh good show good show I don't know what the ew, ew, wee, wee. Vivi, yes, good show. Vivi, Vivi, good show. There you go. See, this is what you do when you don't want to freak out and you want to put a seven there. This is what you do. You turn it into this because this is better than if you just unload it in the the hyperbolics with the fires and the thunders and then yeah. Not a freak out. Not a freak out. <sighs> These are the people that bomb children. Just remember that. All of these people bomb children knowingly. They have to to survive. Telling us what hate speech is. Dictating to us the moral terms of our existence. The new regulation calls for the tech platforms to remove hateful comments based on race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, disability as well. Sexual harassment. Within 24 hours after they are flagged by users, you mean Gestapo-like turncoats. That's what you are, you people that do this. You're Gestapo-like. I'm not saying you're Nazis. You're Gestapo-like, though. Gestapo-like turncoats. Because most of the human beings that do this are we, the poor. We do this to ourselves. We are the primary reason why they control us. Because we do this to us. 
You people. You idiots falling for this hate speech, speech moronicism. Why do you think billionaires support your initiatives? Idiots. I don't mean in your entirety of your lives. I just mean the way that you're thinking and, 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 and what you hope will deliver you from sin. No, to deliver you from evil. Deliver us from evil. And murder those who forgive us. <clears throat> oh, wait. Did I say that wrong? No, no, I didn't. That's that's kind of the ideology that they're putting forth. So that's why everybody's like, oh, hold on, we're, wait a second. Um, we didn't, we, we didn't want to be murdered. We were like, yeah, we don't like racism, but we don't want to be murdered. And then, like, even the people that you think you're protecting, they're looking around and they're like, yo, what? What are you going to do? Wait, hold on. <clears throat> My cousin is one of those people. I'm talking about a black person talking about a white person because his, white, his cousin is white. I said this before. One of the reasons why racism has such a hard time really becoming... Well, the racism... The systemic racism that exists exists because of racism was part of the social culture constructs and all that pretty much prevailing. It's not now. But these remnants still exist, like the ghettos still exist. They need to be destroyed, not the human beings, the systems that keep these human beings in these horrible conditions. So... <coughs> We poors, we are constantly being told that we have to hate one another and mistrust one another because we keep thinking that the vehicle of power, the vehicle of political power that we choose is really going to finally deliver us from the evils of the other side and finally create a land of plenty for people like us, whatever us we think we are. But the real we is truly we the poors. And we the poors is we the world because that's what makes America the greatest country in the world. It's not our laws. It's, it's, it's not our history. It's our reality. We are the world. Everybody lives here. And everybody is citizens here. They're part of the process. That's what makes us great. It's the hugest, the biggest advantage that we have over every other part of the world in, in, in every other part of the world. We are the world. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the biggest threat that America is to the rest of the world is we are the place that disproves ethno-nationalism. We don't disprove nationalism, although I have, I have my own, and when I say nationalism, there are, there are varying degrees, of militant, less militant, more consensual, less consensual, never Never consensual, just mean more consensual. Uh, but uh, we, we have, we, we disprove the ethno-nationalism and the factions within that want to keep that reality. Like, that reality already exists in America. Most of the unease that we have with one another is because of the lies that are being told to all of us. <clears throat> but we have far more in common the 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 black gangbanger to use a stereotype the black the proverbial black gangbanger you have more in common with the white soccer mom than you do whatever politician you will ever vote for you do and that white soccer mom has more in common with you than any politician she'll ever vote for and you guys just don't know it and if you ever figured it out these politicians, these thugs, these psychopaths, their day would die peacefully because people would just ignore them. They're like, listen, we don't need your stuff. Listen, your public schools, if your public schools provide a quality service, we'll send our kids there. But if you can continue, if you continue to use our children as lab rats for the latest centralized mad scientist plan that you want to hoist on the rest of us then we're going to build our own schools and do things our way or maybe we won't have schools maybe some of us will some of us will we'll have different ways of doing things but listen man 
If you provide good police that don't just show up to collect money from us, that actually show up to return our property when it gets stolen. I've reported property stolen at least, I believe, four times in my life. Never, ever, ever heard a word back on any of it. And that's the case for almost all of us. You solve crimes. You actually be a peace officer. We support the police. Great. Then we say, yeah, thank you for your service. Thin blue line, all that stuff. But you don't do that. If you do do that, that's such a tiny part of your job. All you do is show up to collect money for the most part. All you do is to take crap from us. Sell our houses. Take our guns. Pull us over for going 10 miles over the speed limit when nobody else is on the freaking road. That's what you do. That's all you do. Your hall monitors who have the the license to kill. That's what makes you dangerous because you have the license to kill in your hall monitors. That's what makes you so dangerous. That's what makes your wor work more dangerous. Because you, you live in a world in which they're telling you to go all over the place and do all kinds of things and keep keep prodding at people, keep antagonizing people over and over and over again. It's got to stop. You police, you're us. You are one of us too. Even that, that black gangbanger doesn't realize he has more in common with you than he does any politician that will ever promise him deliverance from you. He's better off aligned with you. You're better off aligned with him. You have more in common with that black gangbanger. Mr. I'll just use a stereotype. The, the white racist officer. The white racist officer. The stereotypical white race op racist officer has more in common with that black gangbanger than he does any politician he will ever vote for. Yeah. True story. True freaking story. And yet, he's a meat machine who's being machine. And so is the black gangbanger. He's a meat machine. I am a meat machine. But the cop especially. The officer is the ultimate meat machine. That's the one that has to die and has to kill. That's the one that has to take in the horrors of the end result of the laws and the regulations that these killers write. They're the ones that have to go to sleep at night and have these horrors in their head. They're the ones. So I have I have great empathy with, with cops. But at the same hand, I don't have any tolerance for the parts of their jobs that cause them, that, that call on them to basically harass their neighbors shake them down for pennies so that their 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 masters will 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 keep them keep them employed and keep their pension safe and keep their kids future college funds secured just just yo man just living and that's what we're all doing we're all just living we're all we're all cooperating with the with the gentle coercing of our lives the gentle dis diminishment of our lives anyway i think i'll end the feature there yeah i don't have a promotion at the end of this one next week I'm gonna have some stuff